last part is the closing remarks. So I would like to call on first Dr. Shrillert Chot Pantarat, who is a deputy director of Environmental Research Institute, Chulalongkorn University. Hello, okay. Uh, Miss Julia Fini, Mr. Nile, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, firstly, I would like to convey our sincere thanks to SEI for extending the invitation to our institute to join and to be part of the remarkable meeting here. And I would like to grateful for support of the FAT of government of Australia. On behalf of uh, Environmental Research Institute, Chulalongkorn University, I deeply honor to stand here. I would express my heartfelt thanks to each one of you for your sharing in building climate resilience in the Mekong region, breaking side policy and practice conference. I strongly believe that our time together here has been truly remarkable. Uh, free with share in science of united commitment to addressing environmental challenges. The knowledge and experience exchange here will definitely have a lasting impact. However, let us remember that our journey does not end here. It's now our collective responsibility to take what we have learned for positive change in our community. I encourage us, uh, all of us to stay connected, to keep conversation going, and most importantly, to con continue working together for a more resilient Me Mekong region. And once again, I would express my heartfelt thanks to all of you for your presence here and for your uh, invaluable contributions. I wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Schillert. And now I would like to call on Mr. Niall O'Connor, um, SEI Asia Center Director, for the final closing remarks. Okay. Um, I promise I won't keep you very long, but it's very fortunate that it's raining outside, so you can't get home too easily anyhow. So, um, wow, uh, absolute pleasure to be here, and what a day. Um, we've had so many experts from the scientists, from policymakers, from the media, from civil society. You know, there's been so much going on, not just in this room, but on the sidelines of this as well. It's been just so much information. But I wanted to start with a quote, um, which was from a colleague of ours in SEI, Dr. Richard Klein, and he mentioned, either we transform society in a way that avoids the worst of climate change, or climate change will transform society for us in ways that are difficult to foresee, but likely not to be very pleasant. And I think that's gonna be the call as we should have for the rest of you know, taking all the messages from here forward. If we don't do something about it, we'll be forced to do something about it, and we'd like to avoid that. But I think the good news from today is that we see a lot of potential. There's a lot of clarity in what we have to do. We have, we talked, I think, in a meeting yesterday about the unknown unknowns and the known knowns. I think we know where we have to go. We've got a lot of good direction, a lot of clarity from the IPCC reports. We know the targets. We've got a lot of solutions. We know what they are in many ways, so we can solve an awful lot of the problems um, already if we have the will and the desire to do so. so I think we should try and focus on that and look at um, how we can drive the finance to, to, to support a lot of these initiatives, how we can get it down to the community level, how we can unite governments with civil society, with research institutions, um, and try and make this a more inclusive and a more structured process to bring about lasting change. Um, and this for us is all about this bridging science, policy, and best practice. And if we looked at what we started off today with, bringing the scientists in to make sure that we have an evidence-based grounding in what we're doing, 
bringing the policymakers in to understand why science is important, but also what are the gaps that policymakers want. We don't always speak the same language. Um, making sure that we have civil society embedded in our thinking and support, so that inclusion is, is certainly a founding factor in it. But then also looking at media. Um, how do we get the message across? Um, as I said, we don't all speak the same language, but sometimes even if we do speak the same language, we don't make it clear to one another. So a lot of work to do on that. But I think that being Irish, I'm kind of optimistic anyhow. So I always see the glass half full. Uh, soon you'll see it full outside, but for now it's half full in here. We, we have these solutions, so we should look towards really enacting them and taking them forward. And it's a collective approach for all of us to do so. Um, one of the earlier sessions, I talked about the cost of inaction. Um, and I just kind of feel that it's, it's a massive cost, and it's a cost that we can't afford because it's not about money, it's about people's lives, it's about biodiversity, it's about the founding, of, the founding blocks for, for us on life and on Earth. So we can't afford not to act on this. Um, and we know that there's an urgency to it. Um, we talk about 2030, that is around the corner. We talk about 2050, it's not that far away. And I was thinking about it, maybe there's some of the fellows here who are not yet uh, that old. Um, but I was looking back at 2000 when you had the Y2K, when we thought the world was going to fall apart when computers went to zero, zero. It isn't that far away. Like it's 24 years ago. And that, that was a, a huge kind of time in life. And yet it's very close to where 2050 is going to be in 26 years from now. What has changed in those 24 years when we, we also knew about climate change back then? We haven't done a lot to really change. And yet we've got a massive change to go to, to maintain the 1.5, to reduce our emissions. So I, th I think there's a huge challenge for us to pull all this together. I'm not going to try and summarize all of the different events we had today, but I think there's you know, a lot of key messages coming out that we will take and we'll share back to everybody. And I want to thank the, the, the team there for doing all the wonderful um, artistic summaries of these events. I think they, they, they do capture a lot of the, the words that were said. But I think you know, if we're going to close up now, I think we should take a positive home with us. We do possess the knowledge, a lot of it. There's always new and innovative ways to improve things, but we do possess the knowledge. We have the tools. We can see from here there's a lot of determination to do this, and we want to make the change. So I think if we pull all that together, I think we have a good potential to drive for change. Um, and there is urgency, so please let's kind of use that as a call for us to push forward and make sure that we design the future we want and it doesn't design the future we make. So to finish up, I just want to say a big thanks to a number of people. Um, first of all, to all the scientists, from, particularly from the IPCC, that joined us today. It's great to have four scientists um, and others in the room. To all the policymakers from governments, I know it's a lot to take the time out to join us, but appreciate that. Civil society, you're always welcome at SEI. So it's great to have you on board and work with us. And indeed, the media, who we now want to task you with taking all of this information and putting it out there somehow and connecting to all of the people in this room to gather more and more information about climate change, about environment, and to help us kind of drive the agenda. Um, thank you for my colleagues from Chulalongkorn University as well. It's a pleasure to be working with you on this event, um, and you've been a great support to SEI over the years. We look forward to that continuing into the future. To our colleagues at DFAT, Shane is here beside us. Gemma has, uh, I think, left, unfortunately, a very busy schedule. And Dwight, you've been a great support in this. I know the work that we're doing, so we're very happy to have you as partners in this process. So long may it continue. To the hotel, I think everybody's enjoyed their food. Everybody's enjoyed the safe and security of the hotel. So thank the hotel staff for us as well. Uh, last but not least, SEI team. There's a big team behind all of uh, this. They've been working very hard to make sure everything runs smoothly. So a big thanks to everybody from SEI and everybody else. Now, it's, it's something you don't get to say often, but the first round's on me. So uh, if you want to join us outside for a few, refresh a few refreshments, uh, thanks everybody for joining us today here. Thank you.